Long Discourses Ma Paranabhne Sutta, 3. 16 The Discourse About the Great Emancipation. The Third Chapter for Recitation 17, Nanda S. Failure. Then the Gracious One, having dressed in the morning time, after picking up his bowl and robe, entered vessel for alms. After walking for alms in vessel, and returning from the alms round after the meal, he addressed Venerable Nanda, saying, Take up the sitting mat, Nanda, we will approach the plush shrine to dwell for the day. Very well, Reverend Sir, said Venerable Nanda, and after replying to the Gracious One, and taking the sitting mat, he followed along close behind the Gracious One. Then the Gracious One approached the plush shrine, and after approaching, he sat down on the prepared seat and also Venerable Nanda. After worshipping the Gracious One, sat down on one side. While sitting on one side the Gracious One said this to Venerable Nanda. Delightful, Nanda, is Vessel, delightful is the Yudhana Shrine, delightful is the Gautamaka Shrine, delightful is the Sadamba Shrine. Delightful is the Many Sons Shrine, delightful is the Srandada Shrine, delightful is the Pla Shrine. Whoever has developed, Nanda, made much of, carried on, established, maintained, augmented, and properly instigated the four paths to power, could, if he wanted, Nanda, remain for the lifespan or for what is left of the lifespan. The realized one has developed, Nanda, made much of, carried on, established, maintained, augmented, and properly instigated the four paths to power. If he wanted, Nanda, the realized one could remain for the lifespan or for what is left of the lifespan. But Venerable Nanda, despite such a gross hint being made by the Gracious One, such a gross suggestion being made, was unable to penetrate it, and did not beg the Gracious One, saying, May the Gracious One remain, Reverend Sir, for the lifespan, may the Fortunate One remain for the lifespan. For the benefit of many people, for the happiness of many people, out of compassion for the world, for the welfare, benefit and happiness of divinities and men, like one whose mind was possessed by Mri. For a second time the Gracious One addressed Venerable Nanda, saying, Delightful, Nanda, is Vessel, delightful is the Yudhana Shrine, delightful is the Gautamaka Shrine, delightful is the Sadamba Shrine, delightful is the Many Sons Shrine, delightful is the Srandada Shrine, delightful is the Pla Shrine. Whoever has developed, Nanda, made much of, carried on, established, maintained, augmented, and properly instigated the four paths to power, could, if he wanted, remain for the lifespan or for what is left of the lifespan. The realized one has developed, Nanda, made much of, carried on, established, maintained, augmented, and properly instigated the four paths to power. If he wanted, Nanda, the realized one could remain for the lifespan or for what is left of the lifespan. But Venerable Nanda, despite such a gross hint being made by the Gracious One, such a gross suggestion being made, was unable to penetrate it, and did not beg the Gracious One, saying, May the Gracious One remain, Reverend Sir, for the lifespan, may the Fortunate One remain for the lifespan, for the benefit of many people, for the happiness of many people out of compassion for the world, for the welfare, benefit and happiness of divinities and men, like one whose mind was possessed by Mri. For a third time the Gracious One addressed Venerable Nanda, saying, Delightful, Nanda, is Vessel, delightful is the Yudhana Shrine, delightful is the Gautamaka Shrine, delightful is the Sadamba Shrine, delightful is the Many Sons Shrine, delightful is the Srandada Shrine, delightful is the Pla Shrine. Whoever has developed, Nanda, made much of, carried on, established, maintained, augmented, and properly instigated the four paths to power, could, if he wanted, remain for the lifespan or for what is left of the lifespan. The realized one has developed, Nanda, made much of, carried on, established, maintained, augmented, and properly instigated the four paths to power. If he wanted, Nanda, the realized one could remain for the lifespan or for what is left of the lifespan. But Venerable Nanda, 
despite such a gross hint being made by the Gracious One, such a gross suggestion being made, was unable to penetrate it, and did not beg the Gracious One, saying. May the Gracious One remain, Reverend Sir, for the lifespan, may the Fortunate One remain for the lifespan, for the benefit of many people. For the happiness of many people, out of compassion for the world, for the welfare, benefit and happiness of divinities and men, like one whose mind was possessed by Mray. Then the Gracious One addressed Venerable Nanda, saying, Go, Nanda, now is the time for whatever you are thinking. Very well, Reverend Sir, said Venerable Nanda, and after replying to the Gracious One, rising from his seat, worshipping and circumambulating the Gracious One, he sat down not far away at the root of a certain tree. 18. The Relinquishment of the Life Process Then the wicked Mray, not long after Venerable Nanda had gone, approached the Gracious One, and after approaching, he stood on one side. While standing on one side the wicked Mra said this to the Gracious One. May the Gracious One attain final emancipation now, Reverend Sir, may the Fortunate One attain final emancipation, now is the time, Reverend Sir, for the Gracious One's final emancipation. For these words, Reverend Sir, were spoken by the Gracious One. I will not attain final emancipation, Wicked One, for as long as my monks are not true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching. Practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Will declare, reveal, make known, set forth, open up, analyze, make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. But at present, Reverend Sir, the Gracious One's monks are true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching. Practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Do declare, reveal, make known, set forth, open up, analyze. Make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. May the Gracious One attain final emancipation now, Reverend Sir, may the Fortunate One attain final emancipation, now is the time, Reverend Sir, for the Gracious One's final emancipation. For these words, Reverend Sir, were spoken by the Gracious One. I will not attain final emancipation, Wicked One for as long as my nuns are not true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching. Practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Will declare, reveal, make known, set forth, open up, analyze. Make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. But at present, Reverend Sir, the Gracious One's nuns are true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching. Practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Do declare, reveal, make known set forth, open up, analyze, make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. May the Gracious One attain final emancipation now, Reverend Sir, may the Fortunate One attain final emancipation, now is the time, Reverend Sir, for the Gracious One's final emancipation. For these words, Reverend Sir, were spoken by the Gracious One. I will not attain final emancipation, wicked one, for as long as my laymen are not true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching. Practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Will declare, reveal, make known, set forth, open up, analyze make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. But at present, Reverend Sir, 
the gracious ones laymen are true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned. Bearers of the teaching, practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Do declare, reveal, make known, set forth, open up, analyze, make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. May the gracious one attain final emancipation now, reverend sir, may the fortunate one attain final emancipation, now is the time, reverend sir, for the gracious one's final emancipation. For these words, reverend sir, were spoken by the gracious one. I will not attain final emancipation, wicked one, for as long as my laywomen are not true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching. Practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Will declare, reveal, make known, set forth, open up, analyze, make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. But at present, reverend sir, the gracious ones lay women are true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching. Practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Do declare, reveal, make known, set forth, open up, analyze, make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. May the gracious one attain final emancipation now, reverend sir, may the fortunate one attain final emancipation, now is the time, reverend sir, for the gracious one's final emancipation. For these words, reverend sir, were spoken by the gracious one. I will not attain final emancipation, wicked one, for as long as this spiritual life of mine has not become successful and prosperous, well spread out, possessed by many, become great. Until it is well explained amongst divinities and men. But at present, reverend sir, the gracious one's spiritual life is successful and prosperous, well spread out, possessed by many, become great, it is well explained amongst divinities and men. May the gracious one attain final emancipation now, reverend sir, may the fortunate one attain final emancipation, now is the time, reverend sir, for the gracious one's final emancipation. When that was said the gracious one said this to the wicked Mray. You should have little concern, wicked one, in no long time the realized one will be finally emancipated, after three months have passed from now, the realized one will attain final emancipation. Then at the shrine, the gracious one, mindfully, with full awareness, relinquished the life process. With the relinquishment of the life process by the gracious one there was a great earthquake. And a fearful, horrifying crash of the divinity's thunder drum. Then the gracious one, having understood the significance of it, on that occasion uttered this exalted utterance. Measurable and immeasurable continuity. And the continuation process the sage relinquished content in himself, and concentrated. He broke continuity of self like a coat of mail. 19. Eight Reasons for Earthquakes Then it occurred to Venerable Nanda, Surely it is wonderful, surely it is marvelous, this great earthquake, this very great earthquake, and this awful, hair-raising, crash of the divinity's thunder drum. What was the reason, what was the cause, for the occurrence of this great earthquake? Then Venerable Nanda approached the Gracious One, and after approaching and worshipping the Gracious One, he sat down at one side. Sitting on one side Venerable Nanda said this to the Gracious One. Surely it is wonderful, Reverend Sir, surely it is marvelous, Reverend Sir, this great earthquake, this very great earthquake, and this awful, hair-raising, crash of the divinity's thunder drum. What was the reason, Reverend Sir? what was the cause, for the occurrence of this great earthquake. There are these eight reasons, eight causes, Nanda, for the occurrence of a great earthquake. Which eight? 1. This great earth, Nanda, stands in the water, 
the water stands in the atmosphere, the atmosphere stands in space. There comes a time, Nanda, when great winds blow, with the great winds blowing, the waters move, the waters having moved, the earth moves. This is the first reason, the first cause for the occurrence of a great earthquake. 2. Furthermore, Nanda, when an ascetic or a Brahmin or a divinity, one of great power, one of great majesty, has, through spiritual power, attained complete mastery of the mind, and has then developed even a trifling perception of the earth, or an unlimited perception of water, this earth moves, wavers, flutters, and shakes. This is the second reason, the second cause for the occurrence of a great earthquake. 3. Furthermore, Nanda, when the Buddha to be falls away from the Tasita hosts, and mindfully, with full awareness, enters his mother's womb, this earth moves, wavers, flutters, and shakes. This is the third reason, the third cause for the occurrence of a great earthquake. 4. Furthermore, Nanda, when the Buddha to be mindfully, with full awareness, exits his mother's womb, this earth moves, wavers, flutters, and shakes. This is the fourth reason, the fourth cause for the occurrence of a great earthquake. 5. Furthermore, Nanda, when the realized one perfectly awakens to the unsurpassed and perfect awakening, this earth moves, wavers, flutters, and shakes. This is the fifth reason, the fifth cause for the occurrence of a great earthquake. 6. Furthermore, Nanda, when the realized one sets the unsurpassed wheel of the teaching rolling, this earth moves, wavers, flutters, and shakes. This is the sixth reason, the sixth cause for the occurrence of a great earthquake. 7. Furthermore, Nanda, when the realized one mindfully, with full awareness gives up the life process, this earth moves, wavers, flutters, and shakes. This is the seventh reason, the seventh cause for the occurrence of a great earthquake. 8. Furthermore, Nanda, when the realized one is finally emancipated in the emancipation element which has no basis for attachment remaining, this earth moves, wavers, flutters, and shakes. This is the eighth reason, the eighth cause for the occurrence of a great earthquake. These are the eight reasons, the eight causes, Nanda, for the occurrence of a great earthquake. 20. The Eight Assemblies There are, Nanda, eight assemblies. Which eight? The Assembly of Nobles, the Assembly of Brahmins, the Assembly of Householders, the Assembly of Ascetics, the Assembly of the Four Great Kings. The Assembly of the Tevadasa Divinities, the Assembly of Mrai, the Assembly of the Brahm Divinities. 1. I know, Nanda, after approaching countless hundreds of assemblies of nobles, that there, before settling down, before conversing, and before entering upon discussion, whatever their appearance was, my appearance would become. Whatever their voice was, my voice would become, and I instructed, roused, enthused, and cheered them with a talk about the teaching, and while I was speaking they did not know me and would ask, Who is this speaking, a divinity, or a man? and having instructed, roused, enthused, and cheered them with a talk about the teaching, I disappeared. And when I had disappeared they did not know me and would ask, Who is this who disappeared, a divinity or a man? 2. I know, Nanda, that after approaching countless hundreds of assemblies of Brahmins, that there, before settling down, before conversing, and before entering upon discussion, whatever their appearance was, my appearance would become. Whatever their voice was, my voice would become, and I instructed, roused, enthused, and cheered them with a talk about the teaching, and while I was speaking they did not know me and would ask, Who is this speaking, a divinity, or a man? And having instructed, roused, enthused, and cheered them with a talk about the teaching, I disappeared. And when I had disappeared they did not know me and would ask, Who is this who disappeared, a divinity or a man? 3. I know. Nanda, that after approaching countless hundreds of assemblies of householders, that there, before settling down, before conversing, and before entering upon discussion, whatever their appearance was, my appearance would become, whatever their voice was, my voice would become.
and I instructed, roused, enthused, and cheered them with a talk about the teaching, and while I was speaking they did not know me and would ask. Who is this speaking, a divinity, or a man? And having instructed, roused, enthused, and cheered them with a talk about the teaching, I disappeared. And when I had disappeared they did not know me and would ask, Who is this who disappeared, a divinity or a man? For, I know, Nanda, that after approaching countless hundreds of assemblies of ascetics, that there, before settling down, before conversing, and before entering upon discussion, whatever their appearance was, my appearance would become, whatever their voice was, my voice would become, and I instructed, roused, enthused, and cheered them with a talk about the teaching, and while I was speaking they did not know me and would ask, who is this speaking, a divinity, or a man? And having instructed, roused, enthused, and cheered them with a talk about the teaching, I disappeared. And when I had disappeared they did not know me and would ask, who is this who disappeared, a divinity or a man? 5. I know, Nanda, that after approaching countless hundreds of assemblies of the four great kings, that there, before settling down, before conversing, and before entering upon discussion, whatever their appearance was, my appearance would become. Whatever their voice was, my voice would become, and I instructed, roused, enthused, and cheered them with a talk about the teaching, and while I was speaking they did not know me and would ask. Who is this speaking, a divinity, or a man, and having instructed, roused, enthused, and cheered them with a talk about the teaching, I disappeared. And when I had disappeared they did not know me and would ask. Who is this who disappeared, a divinity or a man? 6. I know, Nanda, that after approaching countless hundreds of assemblies of the Tevatasa divinities, that there, before settling down, before conversing, and before entering upon discussion, whatever their appearance was, my appearance would become, whatever their voice was, my voice would become, and I instructed, roused, enthused, and cheered them with a talk about the teaching, and while I was speaking they did not know me and would ask, Who is this speaking, a divinity, or a man? And having instructed, roused, enthused, and cheered them with a talk about the teaching, I disappeared. And when I had disappeared they did not know me and would ask, Who is this who disappeared, a divinity or a man? 7. I know, Nanda, that after approaching countless hundreds of assemblies of Mray, that there, before settling down, before conversing, and before entering upon discussion, whatever their appearance was, my appearance would become, whatever their voice was, my voice would become, and I instructed, roused, enthused, and cheered them with a talk about the teaching. And while I was speaking they did not know me and would ask, Who is this speaking, a divinity, or a man? And having instructed, roused, enthused, and cheered them with a talk about the teaching, I disappeared. And when I had disappeared they did not know me and would ask, Who is this who disappeared, a divinity or a man? 8. I know, Nanda that after approaching countless hundreds of assemblies of the Brahm divinities, that there, before settling down, before conversing, and before entering upon discussion, whatever their appearance was, my appearance would become, whatever their voice was, my voice would become, and I instructed, roused, enthused, and cheered them with a talk about the teaching, and while I was speaking they did not know me and would ask, who is this speaking, a divinity, or a man? and having instructed, roused, enthused, and cheered them with a talk about the teaching, I disappeared. And when I had disappeared they did not know me and would ask, Who is this who disappeared, a divinity or a man? These, Nanda, are the eight assemblies. 21. The Eight Means of Mind Mastery There are, Nanda, eight means of mind mastery. Which eight? 1. Perceiving forms internally, someone sees forms externally, limited, beautiful or ugly, and having mastered them, he is one who perceives thus, I know, I see. This is the first means of mind mastery. 2. Perceiving forms internally, someone sees forms externally, unlimited, beautiful or ugly, and having mastered them, he is one who perceives thus, I know, I see. This is the second means of mind mastery. 
3. Without perceiving forms internally, someone sees forms externally, limited, beautiful or ugly, and having mastered them, he is one who perceives thus, I know, I see. This is the third means of mind mastery. 4. Without perceiving forms internally, someone sees forms externally, unlimited, beautiful or ugly, and having mastered them, he is one who perceives thus, I know, I see. This is the fourth means of mind mastery. 5. Without perceiving forms internally, someone sees forms externally, blue, blue-colored, of blue appearance, shiny blue, just as the flower called um is blue, blue-colored, of blue appearance, shiny blue. Or just as there is Bunaris cloth smoothed on both sides that is blue, blue-colored, of blue appearance, shiny blue, so, without perceiving forms internally. Someone sees forms externally, blue, blue-colored, of blue appearance, shiny blue and having mastered them, he is one who perceives thus, I know, I see. This is the fifth means of mind mastery. 6. Without perceiving forms internally, someone sees forms externally, yellow, yellow-colored, of yellow appearance, shiny yellow, just as the flower called Kaikra is yellow, yellow-colored. Of yellow appearance, shiny yellow, or just as there is Bunaris cloth smoothed on both sides that is yellow, yellow-colored, of yellow appearance, shiny yellow, so, without perceiving forms internally. Someone sees forms externally, yellow, yellow color, of yellow appearance, shiny yellow and having mastered them, he is one who perceives thus, I know, I see. This is the sixth means of mind mastery. 7. Without perceiving forms internally, someone sees forms externally, red, red colored, of red appearance, shiny red, just as the flower called Bondage Vaca is red, red colored, of red appearance, shiny red. Or just as there is Bunaris cloth smoothed on both sides that is red, red colored, of red appearance, shiny red, so, without perceiving forms internally. Someone sees forms externally, red, red colored, of red appearance, shiny red and having mastered them, he is one who perceives thus, I know, I see. This is the seventh means of mind mastery. 8. Without perceiving forms internally, someone sees forms externally, white, white colored, of white appearance, shiny white, just as the Osid star, is white, white colored. Of white appearance, shiny white, or just as there is Bunaris cloth smoothed on both sides that is white, white colored, of white appearance, shiny white, so, without perceiving forms internally. Someone sees forms externally, white, white colored, of white appearance, shiny white, and having mastered them, he is one who perceives thus, I know, I see. This is the eighth means of mind mastery. These, Nanda, are the eight means of mind mastery. 22. The Eight Liberations There are, Nanda, eight liberations. Which eight? 1. One having form sees forms. This is the first liberation. 2. Not perceiving forms internally, he sees forms externally. This is the second liberation. 3. One is intent on endless beauty. This is the third liberation. 4. Having completely transcended perceptions of form, with the disappearance of perceptions of sensory impact, not attending to perceptions of variety, understanding. This is endless space, he abides in the sphere of endless space. This is the fourth liberation. 5. Having completely transcended the sphere of endless space, understanding, this is endless consciousness, he abides in the sphere of endless consciousness. This is the fifth liberation. 6. Having completely transcended the sphere of endless consciousness, understanding, this is nothing, he abides in the sphere of nothingness. This is the sixth liberation. 7. Having completely transcended the sphere of nothingness, he abides in the sphere of neither perception nor non-perception. This is the seventh liberation. 8. Having completely transcended the sphere of neither perception nor non-perception, he abides in the cessation of perception and feeling. This is the eighth liberation.
These, Nanda, are the eight liberations. 23. Nanda S. Fault At one time Nanda I was living at Uravel, on the bank of the river Narajar, at the root of the goatherd's banyan tree, in the first period after attaining awakening. Then, Nanda, the wicked Mra approached me, and after approaching he stood on one side. While standing to one side, Nanda, the wicked Mra said this to me. May the gracious one attain final emancipation now, reverend sir, may the fortunate one attain final emancipation, now is the time, reverend sir, for the gracious one's final emancipation. After this was said, Nanda, I said this to the wicked Mra, I will not attain final emancipation, wicked one. For as long as my monks are not true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching, practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher, will declare, reveal, make known, set forth, open up, analyze. Make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. I will not attain final emancipation, wicked one, for as long as my nuns are not true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching. Practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Will declare reveal, make known, set forth, open up, analyze, make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. I will not attain final emancipation, wicked one, for as long as my laymen are not true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching. Practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Will declare, reveal, make known, set forth, open up, analyze, make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. I will not attain final emancipation, wicked one, for as long as my laywomen are not true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching. Practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Will declare, reveal, make known, set forth, open up, analyze, make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. I will not attain final emancipation, wicked one for as long as this spiritual life of mine has not become successful and prosperous, well spread out, possessed by many, become great, until it is well explained amongst divinities and men. Now today, Nanda, at the plush shrine the wicked Mra approached me, and after approaching he stood on one side. While standing on one side the wicked Mra said this to me. May the gracious one attain final emancipation now, reverend sir. May the fortunate one attain final emancipation, now is the time, reverend sir. For the gracious one's final emancipation. For these words, reverend sir, were spoken by the gracious one. I will not attain final emancipation, wicked one, for as long as my monks are not true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching. Practicing in conformity with the teaching correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Will declare, reveal, make known, set forth, open up, analyze, make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. But at present, reverend sir, the gracious one's monks are true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching. Practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Do declare, reveal, make known, set forth, open up, analyze, make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching.
May the gracious one attain final emancipation now, reverend sir, may the fortunate one attain final emancipation, now is the time, reverend sir. For the gracious one's final emancipation. For the gracious one has said these words. I will not attain final emancipation, wicked one, for as long as my nuns are not true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching. Practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Will declare, reveal, make known, set forth, open up, analyze, make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. But at present, Reverend Sir, the Gracious One's nuns are true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching. Practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Do declare, reveal, make known, set forth, open up, analyze, make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. May the gracious one attain final emancipation now, reverend sir, may the fortunate one attain final emancipation, now is the time, reverend sir. For the gracious one's final emancipation. For the Gracious One has said these words. I will not attain final emancipation, wicked one, for as long as my laymen are not true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching. Practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Will declare, reveal, make known, set forth, open up analyze, make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. But at present, Reverend Sir, the Gracious One's laymen are true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching. Practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Do declare, reveal make known, set forth, open up, analyze, make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. May the Gracious One attain final emancipation now, Reverend Sir, may the Fortunate One attain final emancipation, now is the time, Reverend Sir. For the Gracious One's final emancipation. For the Gracious One has said these words. I will not attain final emancipation, wicked one, for as long as my laywomen are not true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching. Practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Will declare, reveal, make known, set forth, open up, analyze make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. But at present, Reverend Sir, the Gracious One's laywomen are true disciples, accomplished, disciplined, confident, learned, bearers of the teaching. Practicing in conformity with the teaching, correct in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, and having learned it from their own teacher. Do declare, reveal, make known, set forth, open up, analyze, make plain after giving a good rebuke with reason to the doctrines of others that have arisen and teach the miraculous teaching. May the Gracious One attain final emancipation now, Reverend Sir, may the Fortunate One attain final emancipation, now is the time, Reverend Sir, for the Gracious One's final emancipation. For the Gracious One has said these words. I will not attain final emancipation, Wicked One for as long as this spiritual life of mine has not become successful and prosperous, well spread out, possessed by many, become great. Until it is well explained amongst divinities and men. But at present, Reverend Sir, the Gracious One's spiritual life is successful and prosperous, well spread out, possessed by many, become great, it is well explained amongst divinities and men. 
May the gracious one attain final emancipation now, reverend sir, may the fortunate one attain final emancipation, now is the time, reverend sir, for the gracious one's final emancipation. When that was said, Nanda, I said this to the wicked Mray, you should have little concern, wicked one, in no long time the realized one will be finally emancipated. After three months have passed from now, the realized one will attain final emancipation. Now today, Nanda, at the Pla Shrine the realized one mindfully, with full awareness, gave up the life process. When this was said Venerable Nanda said this to the Gracious One, let the Gracious One remain, Reverend Sir, for the lifespan, let the Fortunate One remain for the lifespan. For the benefit of many people, for the happiness of many people, having compassion on the world, for the welfare, benefit and happiness of divinities and men. Enough, Nanda, do not beg the realized one, now is the wrong time, Nanda, for begging the realized one. For a second time Venerable Nanda said this to the Gracious One. Let the Gracious One remain, Reverend Sir, for the lifespan, let the Fortunate One remain for the lifespan, for the benefit of many people. For the happiness of many people, having compassion on the world, for the welfare, benefit and happiness of divinities and men. Enough, Nanda, do not beg the realized one, now is the wrong time, Nanda, for begging the realized one. For a third time Venerable Nanda said this to the Gracious One. Let the Gracious One remain, Reverend Sir, for the lifespan, let the Fortunate One remain for the lifespan, for the benefit of many people. For the happiness of many people, having compassion on the world, for the welfare, benefit and happiness of divinities and men. Do you, Nanda, have faith in the realized one's awakening? Yes, Reverend Sir. Then why do you, Nanda, harass the realized one up until the third time? Face to face with me, Reverend Sir, face to face I have heard you say, whoever has developed, Nanda, made much of, carried on, established, maintained, augmented, and properly instigated the four paths to power, could, if he wanted, remain for the lifespan or for what is left of the lifespan. The realized one has developed, Nanda, made much of, carried on, established, maintained, augmented, and properly instigated the four paths to power. If he wanted, Nanda, the realized one could remain for the lifespan or for what is left of the lifespan. Do you have faith, Nanda? Yes, Reverend Sir. Then, Nanda, there is this wrongdoing for you, there is this fault for you, in that you, despite such a gross hint being made by the realized one, such a gross suggestion being made, was unable to penetrate it, and did not beg the realized one, saying, May the gracious one remain, Reverend Sir, for the lifespan, may the fortunate one remain for the lifespan, for the benefit of many people, for the happiness of many people, out of compassion for the world, for the welfare, benefit and happiness of divinities and men. If you, Nanda, had begged the realized one twice the realized one might have rejected your speech, but would have accepted it on the third occasion. So, Nanda, there is this wrongdoing for you, there is this fault for you. 24. Nanda's Fault at Rajagaha At one time, Nanda, I was living at Rajagaha on the Vulture's Peak Mountain, I was living right there at Rajagaha near the Gotama Banyan tree, I was living right there at Rajagaha near the Thieves. Precipice, I was living right there at Rajagaha on the side of the Vebitram Mountain in the Seven Leaves Cave, I was living right there at Rajagaha on the side of the Isajili Mountain on Black Rock. I was living right there at Rajagaha in the Cool Wood, at the Snake Tank Slope, I was living right there at Rajagaha in the River Tapad Monastery, I was living right there near Rajagaha at Javaka S. Mango Wood. I was living right there near Rajagaha, in the Deer Park at the place called Crushing Womb, in that place, Nanda, I addressed you, saying, Delightful, Nanda, is Rajagaha, delightful is the Vulture's Peak Mountain, delightful is the Gotama Banyan Tree, delightful is the Thieves' Precipice. Delightful is the site of the Vebitram Mountain in the Seven Leaves Cave, Delightful is the site of the Isajili Mountain on Black Rock. 
Delightful is the cool wood, at the snake tank slope, delightful is the river to Pod Monastery, delightful is the squirrel's feeding place in bamboo wood, delightful is Javaka's mango wood. Delightful is the deer park at the place called Crushing Womb. Whoever has developed, Nanda, made much of, carried on, established, maintained, augmented, and properly instigated the four paths to power, could, if he wanted, remain for the lifespan or for what is left of the lifespan. The realized one has developed, Nanda, made much of, carried on, established, maintained, augmented, and properly instigated the four paths to power. If he wanted, Nanda, the realized one could remain for the lifespan or for what is left of the lifespan. But despite such a gross hint being made by the realized one, such a gross suggestion being made, you were unable to penetrate it, and did not beg the realized one, saying, May the gracious one remain, reverend sir, for the lifespan, may the fortunate one remain for the lifespan, for the benefit of many people. For the happiness of many people, out of compassion for the world, for the welfare, benefit and happiness of divinities and men. If you, Nanda, had begged the realized one twice the realized one might have rejected your speech, but would have accepted it on the third occasion. So, Nanda, there is this wrongdoing for you, there is this fault for you. 25. Nanda's Fault at Vessel At one time, Nanda, I was living right here near Vessel, in the Yudana Shrine, I was living right here near Vessel, in the Gautamaka Shrine. I was living right here near Vessel, in the Seven Mangoes Shrine, I was living right here near Vessel, in the Many Suns Shrine, I was living right here near Vessel. In the Srandada Shrine, and here today, Nanda, at the Pla Shrine I addressed you, saying. Delightful, Nanda, is Vessel, delightful is the Yudana Shrine, delightful is the Gautamaka Shrine, delightful is the Seven Mangoes Shrine, delightful is the Many Suns Shrine. Delightful is the Srandada Shrine, delightful is the Pla Shrine. Whoever has developed, Nanda, made much of, carried on, established, maintained, augmented, and properly instigated the four paths to power, could, if he wanted, remain for the lifespan or for what is left of the lifespan. The realized one has developed, Nanda, made much of, carried on, established, maintained, augmented, and properly instigated the four paths to power. If he wanted, Nanda, the realized one could remain for the lifespan or for what is left of the lifespan. But despite such a gross hint, Nanda, being made by the realized one, such a gross suggestion being made, you were unable to penetrate it, and did not beg the realized one, saying, May the gracious one remain, reverend sir, for the lifespan, may the fortunate one remain for the lifespan, for the benefit of many people. For the happiness of many people, out of compassion for the world, for the welfare, benefit and happiness of divinities and men. If you, Nanda, had begged the realized one twice the realized one might have rejected your speech, but would have accepted it on the third occasion. So, Nanda, there is this wrongdoing for you, there is this fault for you. Were you not warned by me when I declared, there is alteration in, separation from, and change of ability in all that is dear and appealing? How can it be otherwise, Nanda, for that which is obtained, born, become, conditioned, subject to dissolution? It is not possible to say this. It should not dissolve. But this has been relinquished, cast out, let loose, abandoned by the realized one, forsaken the life process that has been given up. For sure this word was spoken by the realized one. Not long now there will be the realized one's final emancipation, after the passing of three months the realized one will attain final emancipation. The realized one cannot for the sake of life go back on that, it is not possible. 26. The 37 Things on the Side of Awakening Come Nanda let us approach the gabled house hall in Great Wood. Very well, reverend sir, venerable Nanda replied to the gracious one. Then the gracious one with venerable Nanda approached the gabled house hall in Great Wood, and after approaching he addressed venerable Nanda, saying, Go, 
Nanda, and whatever monks are living in dependence on vessel assemble them in the attendance hall. Very well, reverend sir, said venerable Nanda, and after replying to the gracious one and assembling whatever monks were living in dependence on vessel in the attendance hall. He approached the gracious one, and after approaching and worshipping the gracious one, he stood at one side. While standing on one side, Venerable Nanda said this to the gracious one, the community of monks has assembled, Reverend Sir, now is the time, gracious one, for whatever you are thinking. Then the gracious one approached the attendance hall, and after approaching he sat down on the prepared seat. While sitting the gracious one addressed the monks, saying, Therefore, monks, whatever teachings have, with deep knowledge, been taught by me, after grasping them well, you should practice, develop, and make a lot of them. So that the spiritual life may last long, and may endure for a long time, and that will be for the benefit of many people. For the happiness of many people, out of compassion for the world, for the welfare, benefit, and happiness of divinities and men. And what are those teachings that have, with deep knowledge, been taught by me, which after grasping them well, you should practice, develop, and make a lot of them. So that the spiritual life may last long, and may endure for a long time, that will be for the benefit of many people, for the happiness of many people. Out of compassion for the world, for the welfare, benefit, and happiness of divinities and men? They are as follows. The four ways of attending to mindfulness. The four right strivings. The four paths to power. The five faculties. The five strengths. The seven factors of awakening. The noble eightfold path. These, monks, are those teachings that have, with deep knowledge, been taught by me, after grasping them well, you should practice, develop, and make a lot of them, so that the spiritual life may last long, and may endure for a long time, and that will be for the benefit of many people. For the happiness of many people, out of compassion for the world, for the welfare, benefit, and happiness of divinities and men. Then the gracious one addressed the monks, saying, Come now, monks, for I tell you all conditioned things are subject to decay, strive on with heedfulness. Not long now there will be the realized one's final emancipation. After the passing of three months the realized one will attain final emancipation. The gracious one said this, and after saying this, the fortunate one, the teacher, said something more. Youths and also the old, fools and also the wise. Rich and also the poor all end in death. Like an earthen vessel made by a potter. Small and great, that which is baked and unbaked. All end in breakage, just so life ends in death. Then the teacher, said something more. Well matured, decayed, with little of my life remaining. Having abandoned rebirth I will go, having made myself a refuge. Be heedful, mindful, and virtuous, monks. With well-reasoned thoughts, protect your minds. Whoever in this teaching and discipline will live heedful. Having given up the round of rebirths, he will put an end to suffering. The third chapter for recital is finished.